Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about fonts. Well, I feel fonts are one of the most underrated element when it comes to PowerPoint. We pay a lot of attention to what sort of colors to use, what sort of imagery to use. But when it comes to fonts, I think we've been using the same old fonts for years now. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to download and install new fonts. Also, I get a lot of questions related to fonts such as what is the ideal font size for the headline, for subheading, for content, what are the good fonts that we can use, how to combine fonts and so many other questions. So I'm going to answer all those questions in this video and tell you how to use fonts and typos like a pro. So without any further ado, let's begin. How to handle fonts and text like a pro? Let's begin with the first one. What should be the size of the font? The most asked question. Honestly, the size of the font depends on multiple factors. There's no right or wrong answer to be honest because a lot depends on what sort of presentation are you making, who is your target audience, what is the theme of your presentation, what kind of graphics are you using and a lot more. Placing text on a slide may seem like a simple task but it involves a number of important design choices that will affect the way your viewers perceive and process your message. Now, for example, look at this slide. It's a very, very basic, neat, clean, regular corporate looking slide, right? For this kind of presentation, the font size for your headline can be up to 36 point, which is 36 number. That is the maximum size. Same for something like this. Again, a very basic, regular corporate looking slide but in certain presentation when you're trying to make a statement like this one in such cases you can go as big as 180 point font so it completely depends on what kind of presentation are you making now look at this one again it's a breaker slide but this kind of font is working for the presentation so what is the theme of the ppt who is your audience and a lot of other factors decide what should be the font size? But for your regular corporate PPT, I would say for your headline up to 36 point, for your subheading up to around 24, 28 and for rest of your content, 12 to 18 maximum is a decent size. Anything more than that would be probably a little bigger. But again, but again, figure out what kind of presentation are you designing and according to that, decide your font size. Do not restrict yourself in the ideal font size scenario. Coming to the second point, the leading space. Now, what is leading space? Let me start with that. It's really, really important to have an ideal leading space between two lines. If you have too little space between two lines like this one, your readability will definitely get affected by this. Versus if you have too much space. So instead of three pointers, these look like six pointers to me, right? So keep an ideal leading space between two lines so that the readability is perfect. In most of the fonts, which are inbuilt PowerPoint fonts, you don't have to worry about the leading space. But when you download external fonts, for example, this one, this is an external font that I've downloaded. And I feel that the lines are quite close to each other. They should have a little bit of space. So this is where you can actually change the leading space from. I can just click on this and I can decide my leading space from here. So one is the default space, which is there in all the lines. If you want to increase, you can make it 1.5. If you want to further increase, you can just keep going down. But I think 1.5 is decent for this one. Same for this one. Now, I feel that these are too close to each other, these lines, especially a few words. So I can just go over here and change the leading space. In regular PowerPoint fonts, most of the fonts would have a decent leading space. Let's try with the regular one, the Arial font. So if you see, the default leading space is quite decent. But whenever you download an external font, do keep in mind that leading space has to be perfect for your sentences. All right. Now moving on to the third point, which is list your favorite fonts. We are used to using the same old fonts all the time. We stick to Arial, Calibri, Century Gothic and that's about it. So I think it's time that you start experimenting with fonts because fonts can make a huge difference in a presentation. And I'm going to show that to you in just next couple of slides, especially when you start downloading fonts, external fonts, create a list of your favorite fonts, keep them handy with you so that whenever you're making a presentation, you don't have to start searching for a font again. 
and when I say make a list, I don't mean three or four fonts. Keep at least 10 to 15 fonts so that you can keep experimenting with different ones in different PPTs. Keep few thematic ones, few corporate looking fonts, few thin fonts, few uh, bolder fonts. So just keep a collection of different kind of fonts. Like if I have to talk about my favorites, I would say Montserrat is one of my all time favorite fonts. I also use Oswald a lot. If I'm making something which is simpler and a little corporate-ish, I would use Roboto font. Otherwise, as far as thematic fonts are concerned, I have more than 1000 fonts that I choose from. Coming to the fourth point, how to pair fonts. Sometimes we want to use different fonts for heading and subheading and maybe for the content as well. So one safe method that I can teach you to pair font is to choose fonts from the same typeface, which means whenever you see any font family it always have more than two or three fonts right you will have bold you will have light condensed and a different variety of fonts so try to pair fonts from the same family because the chances of them getting along will be much higher than choosing two different fonts you can definitely pair two different fonts as well but that will be quite time consuming to mix and match and see which one is working with which so rather choose fonts from the same family you can choose a bolder version for the top your headline you can use a medium version for your subheading and you can use a thinner version for your subcontent. Now look at all these beautiful fonts. And these are all external fonts. Somehow we end up restricting ourselves with the fonts that PowerPoint offers. Trust me, once you start using external fonts, you would be downloading fonts for each and every presentation. Because the variety of fonts available on website is just mind-blowing. So for example, look at this. This is a thematic font, right? It's something that I used for a kid's superhero theme presentation. The name of the font is Bada Boom. If you're making a presentation for kids, you can use a sketchy font like this. If you're making a thematic motivational presentation, you can use a font such as this one. It's called 28 Days Later. So these websites that I'm going to tell you about have some amazing fonts. You name it and the font will be there. You wouldn't imagine there are fonts such as Why So Serious font, which is the font in which Joker writes Why So Serious. There's a font called Batman Forever, which is actually the font in which Batman logo is written. And this is just the beginning. I mean, the variety is just insane. So let me show you a couple of examples of how fonts can make or break your slide. So if you remember, initially I said that fonts, I feel like are really underrated when it comes to PowerPoint. So the reason of this video is that I want you to pay attention to fonts, give them their due weightage so that you can see what fonts can do to your presentation. Now in this slide and this slide, the only difference that you see is of the font. The background is exactly same, the side brackets are same, everything else is same. It's just the font and you can see how different do these slides look. Let's see a couple of more examples. I also want to show you the variety of fonts that's available. Now look at this slide. This is something I designed for a holistic spiritual channel launch. And the moment you look at the headline font, you can make out that this is what it is. So that's the power of fonts. The name of this font is Samakaran font. And I think this is as close as I could get to a Hindi looking font. And I think it really worked for my presentation. This is again, as the picture suggests, something that I created for a kid's scrapbook kind of concept. So you can see the font type is such. From the same scrapbook, another slide and a different font. This is something we created for a luxury event. So the headline, as you can see, the font itself suggests that. Same for this. Now, again, I want to show you the difference between using a regular font versus a thematic font. If you look at these two slides, everything else is same. But font can make a huge difference to the slide. This is something I created for a futuristic presentation. So you can see the font itself is very digital looking. It's going very well with my theme. This font is called 28 Days Later. It's a thematic font that you can use for a motivational presentation for your concept, theme slides, and wherever you're trying to make a statement basically. Again, look at the difference between this slide versus this slide. And the only difference as you can see is of the font. This font is called Eraser, which I've used for, a, again, a kid's presentation. So fonts can definitely help you accentuate the look and feel of your slide. Do not underestimate the power of fonts. Now, what are the few things that you need to keep in mind while downloading a font? And we will come to the websites and the process of downloading and installing as well. 
but i want you to understand few things that you definitely have to keep in mind while downloading any external font so honestly the first and the most important aspect is good legibility which means the readability aspect the font should be comfortable to read and when i say readability it consists of a couple of things for example the formation of the letter how each and every alphabet is formed the thickness of the letter the distance between the alphabets all these things actually combine create a good or a bad readability so make sure that your presentation has a font that is easy to read because i've seen this a lot the moment people learn how to use an external font they start downloading all these fancy cursive calligraphy font which is perfectly all right you can download all sorts of font but make sure that your font has to be readable it has to be comfortable for the audience otherwise the whole purpose gets lost because the idea of the font is not just to look beautiful but it has to be readable so make sure that your font is readable it's comfortable for everyone who's watching the font so i'm going to reiterate on this again things that you have to keep in mind while downloading fonts readability spacing thickness and theme of your presentation now coming to the websites that you can use to download these fonts i'll also give you a demo of how to download and install these fonts all right so these are a couple of websites now let me give you an example of how to download and install a font so i'm going to this website called dafont.com you can either choose from the various categories that you can see over here fancy foreign look techno bitmap gothic basic script all these categories or you can also type the keyword that you are looking for in search window for example i'm going to type digital to see what kind of options do i get and look at this i'm getting some amazing digital looking fonts over here and there are around 77 fonts only in this category so you can imagine the number of fonts that you can get over here the variety is just insane so let's check out the second page Okay so I'm going to download this font called Digital Stream. All I have to do is click on download and wait for the font to get downloaded in my downloads folder. I'm going to open the folder, extract the font. Now all I have to do is right click on the font and install. and the font will automatically get installed in my system now let's check out the font in our presentation the name of the font is digital stream so right now if you see it's not showing in my font window what you need to do after downloading and installing the font is shut down your powerpoint and not just this just shut down all the powerpoints that you have open now let's open powerpoint once again Let's check out the font. We are going to go to digital and you can see digital stream right over here. And now you can use this font. Also sometime for example this font particularly you can see the letters are too close to each other, right? So you can also change the distance between letters by going over here and choosing so this is normal distance right now. You can make it loose, you can make it very loose. depending on your presentation you can choose it i'm going to go just for the loose font and i think this much distance works perfectly well all right so that's how you can download and install fonts i'm going to give you one more example let's go to the other website which is 1001fonts.com there are multiple websites but these two are my favorites also uh, da font has a lot many free fonts compared to this one so whenever you go to the website you can check all these in uh, red and yellow are basically free fonts the one in green are the paid ones so now you can either choose from the categories that are given over here so for example i'm going to choose one from the brush pen let's see what kind of fonts do we get over here and you're going to get all these beautiful fonts look at this so look at this there are more than 248 pages of just these fonts and each page has at least 7 to 10 fonts look at all these amazing fonts so let's try and download one more font i'm going to go to the page 1 only 
and I'm going to download back to black font. So click on download. The process is same for all websites. We'll wait for the font to get downloaded. Once you can see it in your folder, let's extract the font. Perfect. Now I'm going to right click on the font and install. Now let's go back to our presentation. So I'm going to shut down my PowerPoint once again and then we will open it to check out the new font. Let's do it. I'm going to make a copy of the same font and let's try back to black and look at this. My font is right here. So it's that simple to download and install fonts in PowerPoint. As I said earlier, once you start downloading fonts, you wouldn't go back to the regular old fonts that you have been using. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. Also, this is just part one of fonts. I'm going to cover a lot many things about fonts in my next video, which will talk about various effects, how to use multiple tools with fonts and also how to highlight fonts on your full picture slide. So till then, happy PowerPoint to you all. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.